All navies are powerful. An unpowerful navy is more pointless than a paper raincoat or a chocolate teapot. But some navies make the rest look a little more than a rabble of disorganized children stumbling around with no plans. These are the 20 most powerful navies in the world. Number 20. The United States Navy Sometimes, for a list like this, we would count down to the best navy in the world so that you could build up suspense and wonder who's number one. But in all honesty, it's not really hard to see who is number one. It's the United States, and that is very easily proven. It's true that the U.S. doesn't have the oldest naval force because they weren't an official country who needed such a thing when various naval warfare notions were first created, but once they had the ability to build their own ships, well, they did that, and they did it quite often. Now, currently, or at least by the last official count, the United States Navy has approximately 350,000 total naval personnel and around 500 ships. That might sound like a lot, but when you understand the strength of those individual ships and the things that they're capable of, you'll understand that it's much more than enough to get the job done, and then some. Its fleet includes 11 nuclear-powered aircraft carriers, 9 helicopter carriers, 22 guided missile cruisers, 70 destroyers, 21 literal combat ships, and over 70 nuclear-powered submarines, along with numerous other patrol boats, landing ships, and auxiliary vessels. Focusing just on the carriers, these are the vessels that would be sent out into war zones to help establish dominance, while also launching long-range strikes via either the missiles that they have on board or the jets that can strike at equally long ranges, and then fly back to the carriers to refuel. It's not an exaggeration to say that the United States have the biggest and the best and most powerful aircraft carriers in the world. They're in a class all their own. Plus, because of how the United States will spend its military budget, they're always trying to think of a new way to improve the vessels, the ships on board, the defense systems, and more. They've even begun to incorporate laser weapons on some of these ships in order to destroy incoming missile attacks from enemy vessels. The United States Navy is so strong that it's said that just one carrier going into a war zone could be enough to turn the tide. So now just imagine an entire fleet of them coming to an enemy nation's doorstep. That would be quite the bad day for them. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now it's time for the sweet topic. This warship can destroy the world in a few minutes, so if there's something you've always wanted to do, you should do it now, for life is precious. The UK's Royal Navy is already one of the most powerful navies in the world, but they're about to push their legacy one step further, those cheeky little snaggletooth scamps. Because just look at this utter behemoth that they have in development, a true beast of the seas. And if more units are produced, each one will essentially be a moving country given the size and scale. And that's without even mentioning the weapons on board, which are, at present, being kept secret. As always, let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below using the hashtag SweetTopic. Number 19. The People's Liberation Army Navy Now that I'm done in fantasy land, let's get back to reality for a bit to talk about actual forces that China has to bear on its Navy side. Or more accurately, what the People's Liberation Army Navy has to offer. Yes, that's the official designation they go by, and what may surprise you is that in total number of ships, the plan technically has more than the U.S. Navy. At least, at last count, they had about 750 ships in their disposal. That might make you scratch your head because we wax poetically about the United States and their forces for some time, but how does that work if the People's Liberation Army forces are more numerous? Well, as in all things, there are certain levels of capability that have to be measured in something like this. And while China has greatly expanded their naval ranks in recent years, when you look at what they actually have, it doesn't really add up. Their fleet is comprised of three aircraft carriers, two helicopter carriers, 51 destroyers, 
50 frigates, 71 corvettes, and 80 submarines. Now, yes, that does mean that they have a strong force, but it's not as strong as the United States. Plus, they only have about 300,000 people running all of these ships, while the United States has 500,000. And the United States planes that are on the vastly more numerous carriers hold up much more weight than the Chinese planes do. That being said, the Chinese are still a terrifying force in their region, as the people of Taiwan can attest to, plus they're expanding their ranks further on the water. So let's just hope a Chinese-US Navy battle isn't in our near future, because if one was to take place, it probably wouldn't turn out well for anyone. Number 18. The Russian Navy Russia is another nation that's tricky to talk about because we all know that they've been using their military strength over the last while due to the war in Ukraine. That conflict has gone on for far too long and left many wondering when or even if it's ever going to end. But as we focus on the Navy, you have to admit that the Russians do know what they're doing when it comes to naval might. The Russian Navy has around 160,000 total naval personnel and a fleet of approximately 360 ships. It consists of an aircraft carrier, 5 cruisers, 12 destroyers, 11 frigates, 81 corvettes, and approximately 68 submarines. Now, you're beginning to notice the divide when it comes to the nations and how many ships they have to bear. And when it comes to Russia, their greatest asset is that they don't exactly live in the most hospitable places in the world. As a result, they focused on ensuring that their naval craft aren't only powerful, but also quite durable, and able to go through places like the Arctic Circle without any issues. Their submarines, especially, are really good at doing that. Plus, even though they're not the most technologically advanced country in the world, they do put a whole lot of effort into making sure their naval vessels have the best technology on board. Russia knows that at any moment they could get into a fight, especially if they're the ones starting the fight. And as a result, they know that they have to be as ready as possible, and their ships and fleet prove that, while they may not have the biggest numbers, they will put up a fight however they can and attempt to outlast their foes. And as Russians have shown throughout their history, they're more than capable of putting the screws to any opponent until there's nobody left to give up a fight. Number 17. The Indonesian Navy It may honestly surprise you that Indonesia has the fourth best navy in the world. I mean, after all, you don't really hear about Indonesia getting involved in too many conflicts in modern times. Yes, they have been invaded by various people over the years, but they're also not the ones who are setting off wars or really having to defend themselves on a regular basis. One of the reasons for this is that they're smart enough to know that a navy is the best way to defend themselves, given that they're an archipelago. And in this case, an army or air force would only go so far to help them in a large-scale fight. But by having a large and spread out navy that can cover their island chain and the nearby waters, well, that tends to be quite helpful. The Indonesian navy has approximately 75,000 naval personnel and a fleet of over 243 ships. So yeah, they are ready to defend themselves, and I wouldn't want to be the one to try and test out just how ready they are. Number 16. The Republic of Korea For our next two entrants, we're going to get a little bit unique due to the history that defines them. First up, we have the Republic of Korea Navy. And just to be clear, I'm talking about South Korea, though that should have been obvious since it was called a republic, whereas North Korea is an absolute dictatorship. Regardless, while South Korea may be thought of as a cultural hotspot and a gaming and music mecca for some, they do know how to defend themselves and their borders. That's mainly because they know exactly what would happen if they weren't to do that given their neighbors to the north and the people who will sometimes support those neighbors. The South Korean Navy features approximately 70,000 active naval personnel with a fleet of around 150 ships. This includes 70 aircraft, including helicopters, and their navy is known for their versatility. Its fleet is comprised of two helicopter carriers, 12 destroyers, 12 frigates, and more, and it's a pretty robust fleet for a country the size of South Korea. But then again, it also speaks to their mindset of wanting to be ready for anything and everything just in case another war comes their way. The Korea War in the 1950s was a devastating one that no matter how you slice it, the people of South Korea 
don't want that to happen again. That's why they've not only outfitted themselves with impressive ships, but their personnel are well-trained so that they can go from ship to land and battle there without any issues. And when you fear for the worst, you tend to make yourself the best to be able to fight back. Number 15. The Japan Maritime Self-Defense Force Here's an entry that's very easy to talk about and not for the reason you may think. Some of you may recall world history where it was specifically stated that after the events of the Second World War, Japan would renounce all of their active military forces. This would be later known as Article 4 in their constitution. And for the record, many people in Japan are fine with not having any kind of active military force because they prefer to be a pacifist nation that focuses on advancing themselves through technology and not through the use of weapons. However, as wise people would tell you, it's always good to have a backup plan just in case. And that's where the Japan Maritime Self-Defense Force comes into play. It's meant to be strictly a self-defense force, but it can also hold its own. The Japanese Navy features 51,000 active naval personnel, with a fleet of 150 or more ships, and it may not be the best force around, but it's not really trying to be at the same time. Again, they're just trying to be nothing more than a self-defense force, but if push comes to shove, they will fight back, because as their Supreme Court ruled, it is the right of the people to defend themselves. And they've also got some pretty good allies who would probably show up at their doorstep to help out. That's something that we should all be able to appreciate. Number 14. The Indian Navy Given that it's one of the largest countries in the world and has one of the biggest populations on the planet, it should come as no surprise that the Indian Navy has a good spot on this list. That all being said, they wouldn't have been this high for too long, given that they had to go through a major overhaul to ensure their navy was up to snuff. And by that I mean that instead of straight up making their own fleet of ships, they simply bought other vessels to help bolster the ranks. It might not have been how other nations have done it, but it does work for them. The Indian Navy has around 68,000 active personnel, with a fleet of about 300 ships, and given that they have a large coastline, and thus attacks could come from various places, they do need a fleet like this in order to protect their borders, and they likely do that very well. Number 13. The French Navy now, if you were going to talk about some of the oldest and greatest naval fleets in history, you would certainly need to discuss the French Navy during many parts of their time. They're one of the oldest dogs in the fight, and they do know how to fight very well more times than not. Plus, due to their experience, they know that they need to have a vast force that is comprised of multiple kinds of ships to potentially deal with their European neighbors and other dangers that may come their way. Their fleet includes one nuclear-powered aircraft carrier, Three helicopter carriers, 11 destroyers, 11 frigates, and 10 nuclear-powered submarines. And they have over 180 ships in their total fleet, which features about 37,000 people to help man them. This is another case of them not really having the biggest fleet, but they do know how to use it, and that's the important part. It's very doubtful, given who they are and their history, that France would ever be ones to start a war that rallies multiple nations against each other. However, they would be a fierce ally in trying to bring down and make others into scrap. Number 12. The Royal Navy If you want to talk about the other oldest navy in the world, you need to look no further than the United Kingdom and its Royal Navy. At one point in time, the British naval force was one of the most terrifying things in the world, and that's why the British Empire was so vast and its fleets were nearly unstoppable. While their empire has been reined back a whole heck of a lot, and probably for the best if we're being honest, that doesn't mean that they don't have a fleet that's capable of standing up for themselves and fighting off evil. The Royal Navy has approximately 34,000 active personnel and a fleet of around 90 ships, operating approximately 175 aircraft, some of which were sold to them by the United States to ensure that they had the best around. They include two aircraft carriers, six destroyers, 13 frigates, and 11 nuclear-powered submarines. So, should it want to, the Royal Navy could reach around the world to be where it's asked to be or forced to go and they have the experience to know how to get the victory either on or beneath the water. So, you shouldn't go underestimating the Brits, because you may end up regretting it.
Number 11. The Turkish Navy Here's another nice surprise to round out the first 10 navies, because if you look at a map of the world, you're going to notice that Turkey doesn't really border any oceans. Instead, it's next to two seas, being the Black Sea and the Mediterranean Sea. And given that, shouldn't they not have that big of a navy? Well, it's actually the opposite, because these seas, while they are not oceans, have been host to many battles over the course of history. And since they're on opposite sides of Turkey, that opens them up to enemies of numerous types. And so they need a fleet that's capable of handling whatever comes their way. Its fleet consists of one helicopter carrier, five amphibious assault ships, 16 frigates, 10 corvettes, 11 mine warfare, 35 offshore vessels, and 12 submarines. Plus, not unlike France or the UK, Turkey is known for being quite a naval power, and it's also smart enough to realize that it needed to modernize their vessels so that they could stand a chance against forces with more resources. It doesn't matter how big your aquatic battlefield is or is not, you're going to need to have the ships to defend yourself when the time comes. Number 10. The Italian Navy Italy has been a constant focal point for wars and conflicts all across history, which includes both world wars, and as such, it knows how to handle a navy and cause problems. All that being told, the navy has about 31,000 people within its command, and they have ships of every type to try and stop whatever kind of advance may enter their range. In fact, that's one of the best strengths of the Italian Navy. They're constantly evolving, and that makes it so that enemies can't really predict what ships they'll be facing or how to even counter them. Currently, they feature a whole host of different vessels and a varied fleet of auxiliary ships. Number 9. The Brazilian Navy Here's another navy you wouldn't really talk about much on the global scale, but if you live in South America, well, you'll know the power of the Brazilian Navy. That's because this navy helped gain Brazil's independence when they fought against Portugal, and it remains empowered to this day. Since then, they've expanded, using their connections with other countries to buy both ships and aircraft that bolsters their forces, and they've also used other ships to create things like the Merchant Navy to help gain their economy. As of last count, they have over 100 vessels to be put to use, and that includes everything from an aircraft carrier to 12 river auxiliary ships. Number 8. The Royal Australian Navy Now we're going down under to talk about the Royal Australian Navy and how it's grown to be quite the important force over the course of time. Those who know the colonization of the region know that originally it was an offshoot of the British Empire, for better and for worse. As such, their original navy was not unlike Japan's, where they were doing things just for self-defense, but as time went on and their independence grew, they made the Australian Navy to help battle against any threats to the homeland and the nearby regions. Their fleet features two landing helicopter docks and a plethora of other ships, including replenishment oilers. It's quite a diverse fleet. And you shouldn't forget that the Royal Australian Navy has been part of almost every major conflict that they could be involved in, so they have done their part to earn their naval status. Number 7. The Royal Thai Navy Not unlike other navies that we've talked about, we don't have an exact count on what the modern Royal Thai Navy has within its fleet, but what we do know is that it has 130 vessels that includes frigates that are equipped with surface-to-air missiles, fast attacked craft armed with surface-to-surface -surface missiles, large coastal patrol craft, coastal mine layers, minesweepers, landing craft, and more. And while they may not have the best fleet in the world, they do need one given the people that are around them. They have multiple other nations with strong enough fleets to take them on should the opportunity arise, and as has already been stated, we don't want an opportunity to arise for any of these navies to clash. But regardless of their ship's numbers, their goal is to simply protect their turf and the waters that surround it. Number 6. The German Navy Well, the German Navy was one of the most feared navies in the world at one time, primarily because of their killer ships known as the U-Boat Submarines. Those things were the number one enemy in the water of World War II, and after they lost that war and NATO formed, Germany then became a huge part of its alliance, likely to atone for what had taken place previously. In total, there are about 65 commissioned ships within the German Navy. They've made alliances with other nations to not only build boats, but to also give them to other countries or to NATO should the need arise. 
Number 5. The Spanish Navy Now here's another country that once had the most fierce naval fleets in the world. In fact, they were so formidable that they were willing to send them halfway across the world to plunder South America and then lost many of those ships due to weather and karma. And needless to say, they never quite got the power back after having lost some key wars. As of 2018, there are approximately 138 vessels that the Armada has, which includes minor auxiliary vessels, amphibious assault ships, and more. And even though they're not as powerful as they once were, it was the Spanish who had made huge advancements in naval technology, including making the first submarines that were used for military combat. Number 4. The Bangladesh Navy Not surprisingly, the Bangladesh Navy is defined by its own government as a fleet of ships that are meant to protect its economy and military stations, both within their country and across the world. However, they also have another key purpose, in that the Navy was designed to help in disaster scenarios of a more natural kind. To that end, they are known for being quite humanitarian in how they help out across the world when they're needed. As of November of 2020, they had five guided missile frigates, two patrol frigates, six corvettes, 38 minor surface combatants of various types, and 30 auxiliaries as surface assets. Plus, they also have two submarines in their ranks. And given the goodwill that they've accrued over the years, it's not really surprising that they work with the United Nations in various peacekeeping missions. Number 3. The Egyptian Navy Given the reach that Egypt has had over the course of history, it's had to use its navy for many purposes over the centuries. I mean, after all, it had the Nile River to help get its ships down parts of Africa and had various seas above it to help get stuff to Europe. So, fast forward to these days, and Egypt has the largest naval fleet in the Middle East and Africa. But ironically, despite having all of that naval force, much of it was not actually built by Egypt, but by allies that made it like the United States, China, and Russia. The Egyptian navy was established in 1820 to safeguard the nation's maritime interests in the Mediterranean and Red Seas. They're comprised of modern vessels and a capable personnel force which plays a crucial role in national defense and maritime security. Their responsibilities include protecting the shipping lanes, conducting anti-piracy operations, and supporting international peacekeeping efforts. And with a history that's rooted in ancient seafaring civilizations, their naval force continues to evolve, adapting to contemporary challenges and advancements. Number 2. The Hellenic Navy For those of you who may be unfamiliar with the term, Hellenic Navy is another name for the Greek Navy. The Greeks were another empire that used ships to do all kinds of things, which included fighting off other empires like the Persians. And while modern history hasn't been the kindest, Greece still features 120 warships and auxiliary boats, and they can all still get the job done. The Greek Navy traces its roots back to ancient maritime prowess, and it's a vital component of Greece's defense. Established in 1828, it defends their maritime interests in the Aegean and Mediterranean seas, and the modern Greek Navy boasts a diverse fleet, along with some skilled personnel that contributes to NATO's missions and regional stability. With their rich naval heritage, they continue the legacy of safeguarding Greece's maritime borders, while also promoting maritime cooperation within the eastern Mediterranean. Number 1. The Swedish Navy Now, believe it or not, the Swedish Navy is one of the oldest active navies in the world, and it just celebrated 500 years of service in 2022. While the navy has undergone a lot of advancements over the years, their current setup features seven corvettes, nine countermeasure vessels, five diesel submarines, 14 patrol vessels, 165 gunboats, and a whole bunch of other auxiliary vessels. So yeah, they may not have the biggest fleet in the world, but it also doesn't mean that they're not trying. It's quite the contrary, really. They're attempting to grow their ranks even more while bolstering themselves for potential conflict. Which, if I'm being blunt, given the instability in the world in several regions, it's not really a bad idea to partake in. Because in the end, it's more than likely better to be safe than sorry. That's all from the realm of the Navy and various nations who dominate the waters with their forces. Were you shocked by some of the countries that made the list and their capabilities out on the water? 
or do you think that another nation should have been on this list because of what they offer? Be sure to let me know all about it in the comments section down below. Check out the other cool things that are showing up on the screen, and I will see you next time.